How are we going, everybody? Uh, at the weeping cherry tree, these are the ones we pruned back a little bit earlier uh, in the season. Now, don't mind the noise in the background. The sheep have heard me just come over here nearby and they think I'm going to give them another feed. They're dreaming. Now, this has been dehydrating because the irrigation hasn't been working. And like I said to you in the previous episode, I'm going through the whole property to clean it up because we, last year this time we were underwater and all the irrigation was turned off and we really hadn't need to turn it back on until now as we're getting into the summer period and the grounds are drying up and you can see how the English box is quite red. It's not a lack of feed, it's actually a lack of moisture. And by comparison, you can even see it on the weeping cherry tree. It hasn't really pushed on a lot of growth on top. We've got a lot of suckering coming on there. It's a lot darker there. That's the rootstock taken off. So it's favoring its own rootstock rather than the weep on top. But that's not to say that the, the top part's dying. It's not dying actually, it's just thirsty. But on top of that, it is a little bit stressed and what it has done is attracted aphids. Now aphids will be prevalent this time of the year especially as we warm up. Uh, they'll be all over fruit trees, they'll be all over your cherry trees just as much as are the parent cherry slug. So they're the ones that uh, defoliate your leaves, the parent cherry slug whereas the aphids, well let me take a sample here off and I should be careful because I've had some education done on how to use a pair of secateurs so I don't cut my finger off. For those who want to know what I did, here's a close up to give you an idea. See the top of the uh, nail? Cut off on an angle? Well, that, not only the nail wasn't cut, but the finger was cut as well. I healed very quickly by the way, so that's, you know, but in three or four days it won't even be there and the fingerprint will be back as well. So lucky me. Now here is a leaf curling which will be covered in aphids and they're on the underside here of this leaf and mind you just before we started rolling there was a, uh, a wasp in here having a, a bit of a search around, have a look, here we go, that, see it, they're all over it. So this is just one small example of the effect that aphids can have on your plant. So they're a sap sucking little creature that will cause a lot of damage and die back. What's going on in the background there? They're just playing games. So sap sucking insects like this will cause a lot of damage. You can wait for the uh, predators to turn up, the ladybirds and the uh, parasitic wasps. They can come along and lay eggs in them and destroy them. Or you can make your own home brew, chili oil soap that I keep talking about. Plenty of recipes on the internet you can find. Or you can use an eco oil, which is a horticultural oil. I find the vegetable oils a lot cheaper by comparison and works quite well with a little bit of dishwashing liquid added into it. But if you're not one to make your own, then get one from your local garden centre and use the easy hand sprayer. Folks, why I say the easy hand sprayer, and I haven't got it here to demonstrate it, is because you've got the swivel nozzles. For those who've never seen them, go on our website, facilitiesgarden.com. They're available at a lot of garden centres. The nozzles will swivel upwards because you want to spray upwards onto the underside of the leaves. For example, here, you need to get the spray in there. And if you don't go underneath it, and it's quite difficult with the leaf curl like that, but you still need to get upward sprays rather than from the top spraying down, because that will just drip from the canopy onto the next foliage, for argument's sake, if it was a normal tree, not a weeper. So you're not getting any spray where the insect problem is. You need to penetrate that and soak them and get them to suffocate. Plus, you need to remove all these suckers. So all these have got to come off like that. And I'm so conscious now, I've cut my finger off again. I've done it one too many times. So cut all these off, because they will keep coming up again on these trees. I'm not gonna leave them at the base, just letting them fall for now, like that, so that we don't lose the energy. We need to keep it going back to the top of the plant. Um, otherwise, eventually what you'll find, and I'm sure as many of you traveled around you know, your suburbs, and seen homes with once they called a weeping cherry tree that's turned into an upright. There's a weeper and then these uprights come through and grow and overpower the weeper. So eventually the weeping part becomes non-existent or very brittle and frail. This had a lot of dye back on it, we've cleaned it off, you can see it's come well so all the uprights gone taken away, we've got a mulchous area, we've got the irrigation working so you can see the growth is going to start coming through here 
and we should get the energy back into the top. But more importantly, spray it if you've got a problem already. Don't wait for it to get any worse. This is as bad as it's going to get. It's on the tips because that's where all the, all the sap is flowing to. And we don't want to lose those tips because if we don't get any photosynthesis, we don't get the energy in the tree to push back down to grow even further. So feed, mulch, spray, prune and sit back and enjoy if it's a fruiting variety as well. Check out our website, vasilisgarden.com. And don't forget, the Yarra Valley Plant Fair and Garden Expo is coming up this weekend. That's a Saturday and Sunday, 11th of November, and 12th, that is. Uh, open all day, both days. Free on-site parking. It's, I think, $10 admission there. You can purchase online or at the gate. Lots of plant stall holders and other great garden products to be on display. I'm going to be there, too, on stage talking to you, meet and greet everybody. Ask me your garden questions. A lot of other presenters as well. It's a great weekend away to get out there and enjoy some great plants because you're going to find some varieties you won't see at any other plant fair or garden expo. Yarra Valley Plant Fair Garden Expo, be there, I'll see you there or otherwise I'll see you on this platform again. From Eva Silly, Marisi.